CBS 47 Fox 30 Action News Jax begins with breaking news. And Action News Jax is following three breaking stories right now. First, a Clay County Schools police officer on leave and under investigation after a local man posted this video to social media. And in Nassau County, we've learned more than 300 students are in quarantine because of potential exposure to COVID-19. But first, more than 100 new police body camera videos are showing us new details about the investigation into a local mother arrested in connection to her daughter's disappearance. Brianna Williams is facing three felony charges, but she has not been charged with her daughter's death. Action News Jacks, Christy Turner is live on the south side. And Christy, the evidence includes video of Williams talking to police right after reporting her daughter missing. And I've been digging through dozens of those newly released videos for the past hour and a half. And some of the clips, Brianna Williams doesn't have much to say to police, but she definitely appears anxious. Take a look at this new video released today. It was recorded the day Brianna Williams reported her daughter missing back in November 2019. Even without audio, you can tell she looks to be nervous in the back of the patrol car. Meanwhile, as police were talking to her, they were also hitting the ground running in the Brentwood neighborhood. They went door to door to dozens of homes searching for any sign of the missing little five-year-old girl. Williams told investigators she woke up that morning back in November and noticed her daughter wasn't in her bed. Has she done this before as far as anything like try to leave or get out or mess with locks or anything like that? Okay. It's a case that I still remember very vividly. Taylor Williams' disappearance sparked a Florida child Amber Alert. The search led police to Alabama days later where they sadly found the little girl's body in a wooded area. I'm still going through the rest of that video, and I'll have more for you tonight at 6. Reporting live on the south side, Christy Turner, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News, Jax. And more breaking news now. Clay County Schools police, an officer on leave amid allegations made against him in a video shared on social media. In that video, a man claims that the officer inappropriately texted a 14-year-old girl. Action News Jack's Paige Kelton is in the newsroom. And Paige, we're not going to show the officer or the man making the accusation. And I want to tell people why. That's because the officer right now isn't charged with a crime. But tonight, we can tell you that officer is off the job. In a nearly 13-minute video posted on Facebook Live today, a man confronts the officer at a Clay County school. He accuses on video the officer, who, as you can see there, is in full uniform of texting a 14 year old girl and asking her for bikini photos. Here's one part of that exchange. What are we going to do about this? You're a Leo. Are you kidding me? Do you not think that's inappropriate to ask her for sexy bikini pics? Now you know what you can and can't say to go to prison. Both the Clay County School District Police and the Clay County Sheriff's Office issued statements to Action News Jax within the last hour saying they're aware of the social media posts and the allegations and the officer is on leave indefinitely while they investigate. We have a crew headed to Clay County to work to learn more about this case. We'll have updates tonight on Action News Jax at 11 in the newsroom. Paige Kelton, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. Also breaking tonight, leaders of West Nassau High School say that there are no plans to go virtual after more than 200 kids are put into quarantine for potential COVID-19 exposure. According to the Nassau County School District, a total of 346 students are in quarantine but in the district because of exposure. Now, this is the latest information. The district does not give information by each school, but they did tell us 200 students at West Nassau are, in fact, in quarantine. Action News Jax will follow these stories throughout the evening. You can download the free Action News Jax app right now to get the latest updates as soon as we learn more. We're about an hour and 15 minutes away from the city of Jacksonville's annual Christmas tree lighting downtown. Now, the public is asked to stay at home and enjoy it all virtually because of the pandemic. And we're going to bring it to you live right here on CBS 47 and Fox 30 at 615. So don't go anywhere. Let's get over to Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrage. And, Mike, it'll be a lot warmer indoors than it will be outside for tonight's event. Exactly. This is the perfect way to watch it this evening is looking from inside out because it is going to be a very chilly evening. We have a frost advisory in effect for inland areas, especially near and west of Interstate 95. But there will be a few pockets 
seeing here between the river and the intracoastal that manage a little bit of frost later tonight into early tomorrow morning. So any sensitive plants, make sure you have them covered or bring them on in for at least the second time in the last week or so. 52 degrees right now. You can see the sunshine. It's clear sky, but dry air, diminishing winds. So that will mean fast falling temperatures over the next few hours. We'll drop through the 40s into the 30s within just the next uh, three to five hours in many inland spots at least, setting us up for the cold night tonight. And then it's a warming trend that I'll show you in the first alert forecast in about 15 minutes. This 19-year-old is locked up in the St. Johns County Jail following a months-long sexual exploitation investigation. Douglas Scipio is accused of recording sex acts and then sending the video to other teens. Action News Jack's Bridget Matter joins us live from the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office. And Bridget, uh, deputies say he used social media, an app, to send the video. And a new police report says he used his phone and the social media app Snapchat to send explicit videos to other teens. Now he's facing serious felony charges and is locked up at the jail. 19-year-old Douglas Scipio was arrested for three counts of cruelty to a child and lewd and lascivious behavior with a victim 12 to 16 years old. An arrest report says Scipio and another man had sex with someone, recorded the video, and sent it to another teen. The report says the victim told police, quote, the defendant had sexual relationships with underage girls and takes videos of his sexual encounters. Police say Scipio kept the videos on his Snapchat account. The address of where police say it happened is redacted in the report, as is the victim's name. Action News Jack's law and safety expert Dale Carson says the charges, if convicted, could mean a significant amount of prison time. If there's a video taken of an underage individual and that is transmitted over the Internet, that's pretty damaging proof that the individual who sent the film was engaged in the conduct, and those are very strong cases for the prosecution. Police obtained a search warrant for Scipio's account. Investigators say sexual explicit video sent to two people was recovered. And Carson says if he's convicted on all of his charges, he faces up to life in prison. Scipio is 19, but he turns 20 in a few weeks, meaning he'll spend his birthday in jail unless he makes his $175,000 bond. For now, we're live in St. John's County, Bridget Matters, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. Right now, protesters are gathered outside City Hall protesting the plan for a proposal on Lot J at the stadium. They believe the money should be used elsewhere. We're opposing Lot J today just because we feel that those funds should be placed somewhere else rather than into the stadium. Because of where our economy stands, there's no way to bring money into the city if nobody's having money to spend. Action News Jack's Ben Becker is live at City Hall where council is meeting. Ben, you learned the council president pushed the vote back. Well, John, first and foremost, these protesters are behind me. They've been out here for about one hour so far. Anti-Lot J, anti-Mayor Lenny Curry. Now, we're keeping a distance because some of these chants have been obscene, so we don't want that to get on TV. We have our finger on the dump button. In the distance, you have JSO keeping a watchful eye on the situation because it's a little bit volatile right now. Now, as for Lot J, there appears to be some undecided votes among city council members as a result of today's meeting. Council is meeting tonight, not likely to end up on the agenda. It will be voted on most likely now January the 7th, but this is a delicate situation. Lot J is an entertainment office and residential project proposed by Jaguars owner Shah Khan, including $233 million of public money, plus interest that brings the taxpayer total to nearly $400 million. But the key here is continue to meet. City Councilman Reggie Gaffney called a special meeting on Tuesday to discuss Lot J. Councilwoman Randy DeFore pushed Jags President Mark Napping for a commitment with a lease extension or eventually give back $150 million, and it didn't go over well. You gave out a hard no. Yeah, I think there's not much clarification on that, is there? On Saturday, Council President Tommy Hazori sent out this statement saying he wants to wait until January to vote on Lot J and referenced JEA that he called a debacle, saying taxpayers and council were being rushed into an agreement, quote, without full disclosure and transparency. Lamping and Mayor Lenny Curry had pushed for a vote this week before the council had its winter recess. Curry has suggested that if Lot J isn't approved, the Jaguars could leave Jacksonville. As for Gaffney and a vote in early January, I think we can get 13 people saying we're ready to move Jacksonville forward. 
And again, these protesters remaining out here at least for the next hour or so. And coming up at 6, how has the city's investment with the Jags and Daly's place worked out? It's kind of tethered there a little bit with La J. I'll dig into those numbers again coming up at 6. Reporting live, Ben Becker, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jacks. All right, take a look. These are the first people in the world to get Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. On the left is Margaret Keenan. She was the first. And then on the right, a man named William Shakespeare. He was the second person to get the vaccine this morning in the United Kingdom. Keenan shared a message to everyone about the vaccine after she got hers. I say go for it. Go for it because it's, it's free and it's the best thing that's ever happened uh, at the moment. So do, please go for it. That's all I say. You know? If I can do it, well, so can you. And the grandmother says she's also looking forward to seeing her family next year. A timeline of events leading up to approval of the vaccine now. The first coronavirus case in the U.S. in January of 2020, according to the CDC. The vaccine trial started in March, and by November, Moderna and Pfizer announced some success with the vaccine. Pfizer's first doses arrived in the U.S. on November 30th. Now we await approval, which could be any time in the next few weeks. Today, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp gave an update on vaccine distribution in his state. It'll be given in phases. Phase one, populations include health care workers who are likely to be exposed to the virus, first responders, and people at high risk of sickness from the virus. Also, other essential workers. Phase two will kick in when the vaccine becomes more available. Last week, we told you Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says people living in long-term care facilities will be the first in Florida to get the vaccine along with health care workers. After long-term care facilities, high-risk frontline health care workers will be next. And people 65 and older or those with significant health problems will have access to the vaccine. Our coronavirus coverage continues throughout the hour at 515. I asked our medical expert about the chances of the COVID-19 vaccine being required before traveling at some point to other countries. Tomorrow, court arguments are set to begin for convicted killer and sex offender Donald Smith. He's on death row for the killing Cherish Periwinkle in 2013. And we told you last night he is requesting a new trial from the state Supreme Court. His lawyer claims the trial should not have happened in Duval County. She says the case garnered too much local attention for a fair trial. Cherish was with her mother and sisters when she was abducted. They were in Walmart with Smith when he eventually walked out with that little girl. The murder came just 21 days after Smith's release from prison for another crime involving a child. We will stream tomorrow's hearing on ActionNewsJax.com starting at 9 a.m. I'm Action News Jax, Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. A lot of sunshine looking out from our first layer sky cam network in Fernandina Beach, but it'll be a frosty night tonight. Temperatures where you live in the first layer forecast in a few minutes. Coming up. Two stories you haven't seen on Action News Jax. First, one local senator wants to allow alcohol to go sales post-pandemic. This is a bad idea. We uncover why not all local businesses support the idea of making it permanent. Then, Action News Jax gets real about life after prison. From age 15, I was out in the street. How one local man is using his passion to help others get a second chance. This is my basketball. <laughs> I'm trying to be the Jordan of this game. Next on Action News Jacks.